We move now to our another topic that is analysis of the statically determined frames. We will solve for this very simple problem. It is very simple as long as we can follow the simple steps in order to solve for the problem. The requirements on this frame is to draw the axial shear and bending moment diagrams of the members of the frame. So we have some simple steps to follow. The first step is to check the determinacy of the frame. Second step is to solve the support reactions. The third step is to isolate at the rigid joint of the frame and draw separately the pre body diagram of the horizontal element and the vertical element. Then the fourth step is to label the forces acting at the joint where we isolate the members of the frame. And for the fifth step, we will solve for the internal forces acting at the rigid joint where we isolate the frame. And for the sixth step, we will construct the shear axial and bending moment diagram of the frame. We will now start with step number one. To check the determinacy of the frame, we have to count the number of members, joints, and support reactions. Members are equal to 2, joints are equal to 3, we have A, B, and C, support reactions components, 2 for hinge reaction, and 1 for roller reaction. So we have 3 support reactions components. We can now substitute M, R, and J to our equation. For internally stable frames, we have 3 M plus R. We substitute the value of m and r that is equal to 9 from this equation then for trice of j that is equal also to 9 if 3m plus r is equal to trice of j then the frame is statically determinate and externally if you can recall if 3m plus r is less than trice of j the frame is externally unstable and there's no need to continue solving if the frame is externally unstable but if 3m plus r is equal to trice j that is statically determinate. It means that we can make use of the equations of static equilibrium to solve for the support reactions together with all the internal forces acting on the frame and eventually we can construct the shear and bending moment diagram together with the actual diagram of the frame. If the frame is statically indeterminate, that is 3m plus r will be greater than trice of j, we need additional equations that we will add to the equations of static equilibrium in order to analyze those statically indeterminate frames. Additional equations was derived from slope and deflections of frames. So after we study about slope and deflection, we will proceed to the calculation of statically indeterminate frames. We will now solve for the support reactions. Just like what we did on beams and trusses, we will assume directions for support reactions. So I assume that CY and AY are upward forces and for AX that is a leftward force. Since we have only one horizontal component for the reaction, to counterbalance 20 kN applied at point B in the rightward direction, I assume that AX is leftward support reaction. Before we apply equations of static equilibrium to solve for the support reactions of this frame, it is usual to solve first for the resultant of the uniformly distributed load that is just equal to the area of the rectangular load. The intensity is 35 kilonewton per meter multiplied by 8 meters is equal to 280 kilonewton and it's acting at the center point of the rectangle that is 8 meters divided by 2 on both ends of the horizontal member. So we will apply summation forces along x assuming that rightward forces are positive since 20 kN applied at point B is acting to the right, that is positive, and for AX, since that is acting to the left, that is negative in our equation. So from this equation, we can be able to solve for AX, and that is equal to 20 kN. AX came out to be positive, then our assumed direction was correct. AX is a leftward support reaction at point A. We will now apply summation moment at point A. So 20 kN with the moment arm 3 meters is clockwise with respect to point A. 280 kN resultant acting at the centroid of the uniformly distributed load is clockwise with respect to point A the moment arm is 4 meters for CY the moment arm is 8 meters is counterclockwise with respect to point A so as we can observe in our equation 20 times 3 is positive 280 times 4 is positive since those are clockwise moment with respect to point A and for CY multiplied by its moment arm which is 8 meters is counterclockwise with respect to point A. So from this equation, we can be able to solve for CY that is equal to 147.5 kN. It is positive, so therefore, 
I will assume direction that C1 is upward was correct. Then we will apply summation moment at point C, assuming that clockwise moment are positive. So we can observe that the 20 kN will pass through our moment center that is at point C. The forces that will create moment with respect to point C will be the horizontal reaction at A, the vertical reaction at A, and the resultant of the uniformly distributed load. For AX, that is a clockwise moment, the moment arm is 3 meters with respect to point C. For AY, that is also a clockwise moment. The moment arm is 8 meters with respect to point C. 280 kN resultant is counterclockwise with respect to point C. The moment arm is 4 meters. So if we try to observe our equation, we have AY times A is positive. Then 20 times 3, that is reaction at point A in the horizontal direction. Clockwise positive. Then 280 times 4, the resultant a counterclockwise moment with respect to point C. C. So therefore, we can solve for Ay from this equation and that is equal to 132.5 kN. Since 132.5 kN came out to be positive, our assumption that Ay is an upward support reaction was correct. We proceed on step number 3. We will now isolate the rigid joints and draw separately the free body diagram. We know that at joint B that is a rigid joint, the connection between the horizontal and vertical members, we will apply the load according to its original location on the frame together with reactions computed in step 2. As we can observe, 147.5 is an upward reaction at point C, 20 kN is leftward, and 130.5 kN is an upward reaction at point A. So here is the applied force at point B, that's 20 kN, and 35 kN per meter for the horizontal member. One common problem in constructing the free body diagram separately of the frame is where to apply the horizontal force at joint B. Why we have to apply this in the vertical element and not the horizontal element? As we can observe for the horizontal element of the frame, there is no horizontal reaction on this free body diagram. So therefore, we have to apply the 20 kN to the vertical element of the frame because we have a support reaction which will counteract the action of the 20 kN at point B and that is the reaction at point A. We will now compute for the internal forces acting at the rigid joint B of the frame. To visualize the internal forces, we need to label according to the positions and direction of both external forces and support reactions acting on them. Label the proper direction of forces and moments. However, if this seems difficult, the directional senses can be assumed. We start solving internal forces on this member that is member AB. Internal forces at joint B are BY, MB, and BX. By applying the equations of static equilibrium, we can be able to solve for the internal forces. Since we are satisfying equations of static equilibrium at every separate FVD of the frame, we have to bear in our mind that it is a great help to label the proper direction of forces and couples at every FVD. Like for example, to this free body diagram, BY at joint B is downward on member AB. Since AY is upward, to satisfy summation forces along vertical is equal to zero, AY and BY should be acting opposite to each other. AY is upward and BY is downward. Therefore, BY was in the proper direction that is a downward force at joint B for member AB since AY is already an upward force. We will now apply summation forces along vertical is equal to zero. Rightward are positive, so we have 132.5 that is AY upward and BY that is downward. From this equation, BY is only unknown and BY is equal to 132.5. Our assumption that BY is acting downward was correct since 132.5 kN came out to be positive. Proper directional sense of MB can be easily predicted by applying summation moment is equal to zero at the location of unknown couple MB. So we'll apply summation moment at this joint at point B. Since moment is equal to force times distance, AX of 20 kN will be the force and 3 meters will be the moment arm. And it's rotating in a clockwise direction with respect to point B. To balance this couple, MB should be a counterclockwise moment. So that is proper direction sense for MB. It will balance the rotation of AX with respect to point B. So we can now solve for moment at point B. We apply summation moment at point B, clockwise moment positive. We know that 20 times 3 is clockwise. We subtract MB that is counterclockwise because we balance the clockwise rotation of 20 kN at point A. So MB 
is equal to 60 kilonewton meter and our assumption that that is counterclockwise was correct because 60 came out to be positive for internal force in the horizontal direction that is bx we know that 20 kilonewton applied at point p is a rightward force and 20 kilonewton reaction at point a is a leftward force therefore bx is equal to zero because 20 positive minus 20 negative because rightward and leftward force they will cancel out so bx is equal to zero that is satisfying summation process along x is equal to C. after solving for the internal process acting at joint b on member a b we will now proceed to the free body diagram of member b as we can observe by is downward in free body diagram a b but in free body diagram b c it should be an upward force for the 60 kilonewton meter moment at point B on member BC that is clockwise compared to member AB that is counterclockwise because we know that actions and reactions are equal forces but opposite in direction. To verify the internal forces we obtain at point B of the vertical member of the frame, we will apply separately the equation of static equilibrium to the horizontal member. If we obtain the same value of BY and MB to this horizontal member of the frame, then what we obtained previously from the vertical member of the frame were correct. Take note that the whole frame is in equilibrium. Therefore, every member of the frame should be also in equilibrium. The reason why on the two members of the frame, we have to satisfy equations of static equilibrium. Assuming that MB and BY are still unknown to this pre-body diagram, we will apply now summation moment at point B is equal to zero. We have 280, the moment arm is 4 meters with respect to point B, that is clockwise moment with respect to point B. For CY that is 147.5 kN, the moment arm is 8 meters, that is counterclockwise moment with respect to point B. Then MB, that is clockwise moment with respect to point B, say that is unknown, couple at point B. So from this equation, we can be able to solve for moment at point B and if we try to calculate that that is equal to 60 kilonewton meter it means that our answer to the previous calculation was identical to what we have obtained in pre-body diagram BC we will apply summation moment at point C to verify if BY is also equal to 1325 to this pre-body diagram so if we apply summation moment at point C BY the moment arm is 8 meters is clockwise with respect to point C 280 multiplied by 4 meters is counterclockwise with respect to point C. Moment at B is clockwise with respect to point C. BY times 8 is positive since that is a clockwise moment with respect to point C. 60 that is moment at point B is also clockwise with respect to point C. Then 280 the resultant of the uniformly distributed load the moment at is 4 meters is counterclockwise with respect to point C. From this equation say BY is still unknown. We can obtain BY that is also equal to 1325 kN, which is also identical to what we have obtained on the vertical member of the frame. Since we obtained similar result from the vertical and horizontal member of the frame, therefore our answer are correct. For solving for the support reactions together with the internal forces at the point where we isolate the members of the frame, we can now construct the axial shear and bending moment diagram. So we will begin with the axial diagram. Since member BC have no axial forces acting on it, then our axial diagram is zero. For the shear diagram, the ordinate of shear at point B of the horizontal member is equal to the internal force at point B that is equal to 132.5 kN. At point C, that is just equal to 132.5 kN, that is shear at point B. We subtract the area of the uniformly distributed load and that is just equal to the resultant it is equal to 280 or 35 times 8 132.5 minus 35.8 since the uniformly distributed load was applied in the downward direction we consider it to be negative the result is negative 147.5 kN and that is what we call shear to the left of point C if we will add the reaction at point C to the value of shear to the left of point C we will obtain the shear to the right of C and that is just equal to negative 147.5 plus 147.5 that is the vertical reaction at point C what we obtain is zero the shear diagram will close here's now our shear diagram then we will construct the bending moment diagram since 60 kN will concave the beam upward at point B then 60 kN should be located 
above the neutral axis and not below. If 60 kN will concave the beam downward with respect to point B, then the 60 kN should be located below the neutral axis. But since 60 kN concave the beam upward, then it is located above the neutral axis. The next we will obtain for the maximum moment. The maximum moment is located where shear is equal to C. To solve for the distance from the left end of the horizontal member of the frame to the point of zero shear, that is just equal to the shear at point B divided by the intensity of the load. So that is equal to 3.786 meters. 4.214 meters, that is just equal to 8 meters minus 3.786 meters. We need those distance because we will solve for the area of the shear diagram we know change in the ordinates of the bending moment diagram is just equal to the change of area of the shear diagram we will now solve for the maximum moment just it is just equal to the ordinate at point b of the horizontal member of the frame then we add the area of the shear diagram this is a positive area so since that is positive that is then 132.5 multiplied by 3.79 that is the distance divided by 2 is equal to 310.8 kilonewton meter so that is our maximum positive moment this value is very important because when it comes to design since this subject is for the preparation of the science subject it will be our design moment it will be the bending moment that will give a maximum bending stress to our beam then the ordinate of bending moment at point c is just equal to the maximum moment at the point of zero shear then we will subtract this area of the shear diagram that is equal to 147.5 multiplied by distance that is equal to 4.21 divided by 2 then the value is equal to 0. Since our bending moment diagram close that is correct. Take note that we subtract the area of the shear diagram because that is a negative area. After we construct the actual shear and bending moment diagram of the horizontal member we will now proceed to the vertical member. So here is now our vertical member. We label the correct directions of forces to our free body diagram. Since we have a compressive force acting on the vertical member of the frame, then that is a negative axial diagram. If however those forces will be acting away our member, then that is under tension and our axial diagram should be positive. We move to the shear diagram. So this is 20 kN acting to the left, so this is 20 kN shear at point A of the vertical member of the frame. There's no load in between point A to point B, then therefore this is constant value of shear. And at point B, that is just equal to 20, we subtract the 20 kN applied at point B, so that is equal to 0. The shear diagram of the vertical member of the frame will close at point B. Then we move on the moment diagram of the vertical member. Since there is no, no couple reaction or applied moment at point A, therefore our bending moment at point A is equal to zero. And our bending moment at point B is just equal to bending moment at point A. Then we will add the area of the shear diagram of the vertical member. So that is just equal to zero plus 20 multiplied by the distance, that is the area, is equal to 60 kilonewton meter that will be our ordinate of bending moment diagram at point B. If you try to rotate this vertical member of the frame in a clockwise direction to make it as a horizontal which is illustrated by these figures from vertical to horizontal member. Thereby, we can apply what we have learned in constructing the shear and bending moment diagram on beams. The only difference is we have an axial diagram. We can also observe that 132.5 is acting toward to its other, so that is a compressive axial. If 132.5 is acting away to its other, then those are tensile forces. Then for the shear diagram, we have 20 kN at point A, so that is just equal to the ordinate of shear at point A. Then there's no load, constant shear diagram. Then at point B, that is just equal to 20, the shear at point A, we subtract the force applied at point B. That is downward, so that is equal to 20 minus 20 equal to 0. So that is how we apply what we learned in constructing the shear diagram of a beam. Since moment at point A is equal to 0, ordinate at point A is equal to 0. Then since there is no moment applied, 
throughout the length of the member, the shear diagram is constant throughout the length of the vertical member of the frame, we will have a first degree curve for the bending moment diagram of the vertical member of the frame. And the ordinate at point B is just equal to zero, that is ordinate at point A. Then we will add the area of the shear diagram from point A to point B, so that is just equal to 3 multiplied by 20, so that is equal to 60 kN meter. That is to avoid confusion constructing the shear axial and bending moment diagram of vertical member. Here are now the summary of axial shear and bending moment diagram of the frame. For the axial diagram, only the vertical member of the frame has axial forces and the horizontal member has zero axial forces. For the shear diagram, we have a constant shear diagram for the vertical member of the frame and for the horizontal member, we have a first degree curve for the shear diagram. And for the bending moment diagram, we have a first degree for the bending moment diagram for the vertical member of the frame and for the horizontal member of the frame, that is a second degree curve. That is the effect of uniformly distributed load applied on the horizontal member of the frame. To those who want a copy of this file in PDF, like and subscribe, comment down your email at below and I will send it to you. Thank you.